everybody. This is Gregory, 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics. For five minutes of your time, it may get you to the divine. Today, we're going to respond to the accusation that the church was not pro-life since its beginning. Now, before we begin, let's start with a prayer. Nomina Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. Amen. Gloria Patri et Filii et Spiritui Sancto. Sucutura in principio et nuc et semper et seculi seculorum. Amen. Nomina Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti. We do have an episode here on the five Catholic non-negotiables when it comes to voting, and we too talk about uh, abortion there as well. And it is obviously as implied one of the five Catholic non-negotiables. So all Catholics must vote according to those five non-negotiables, one of them being um, abortion and pro-life. But certainly, I mean, no one can deny that there are people who call themselves Catholics that are supportive of the murdering of the unborn. And so in their own rebellion, they will spin a narrative that, uh, well, you know, the church wasn't always uh, that way. And what we'll talk about in this episode, or, you know, why is abortion paramount to feeding the poor or clothing the uh, the unclothed and, and all the other social justice stuff? And we have an episode on this on, are you a Matthew 25 Catholic? But no doubt, the Catholic Church, the early Christian Church, which of course was Catholic, has always been supportive of life. Always been supportive of life. So we're going to look at some post-biblical patristic writings to demonstrate this, that there's been an unbroken teaching from the Apostolic Fathers, from the early Church in sacred tradition, all the way, of course, to present time. That it's consistently said that murdering of the unborn or murdering of newborn children is wrong. So let's just get going. So I'm going to be reading a lot here. So first we're going to start with Letter of Barnabas. Now, Letter of Barnabas was probably written mid-70s uh, AD. So, I mean, this is the time where some of the apostles were still alive. This is kind of in the middle point where a lot of the books of the New Testament were being written. I have a treatment here on every book of the New Testament. So this is uh, a time of a lot of writing. Now, Barnabas, of course, is not in the New Testament canon because it was deemed by the Holy Mother Church not to be uh, worthy to be in Scripture. But again, these, like the Proto-Evangelium of James and the Didache and these other things that we've talked about here before, these are still useful historical references and evidence of what the Church believed, whether it be on the belief of the real presence or the belief on purgatory or, in this case, the support of babies. So let's look at what the letter of Barnabas said here. Again, this is mid-70s. Letter of Barnabas 19. The way of light then is as follows. If anyone desires to travel to the appointed place, he must be zealous in his works. The knowledge, therefore, which is given to us for the purpose of walking in this way is the following. Thou shalt not slay the child by procuring abortion, nor again thou shalt not destroy it after it is born. 8074. Didache. We have an episode on the Didache, the teaching of the 12 apostles. Uh, most church, church scholars believe that the actual apostles didn't write this, but again, the Didache uh, is written anywhere in the late part of the first century to the early part of the second century. So we're looking at around the time where uh, John the Evangelist, the sole apostle that was not martyred, is still alive. So again, this is a very good glimpse into the early church. <laughs> and what does the Didache say? Didache, the Lord's teaching to the heathen by the twelve apostles. Now this is the way of life. The second commandment of the teaching, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not corrupt boys. Now we're going to come cover this later. Do not fornicate and, and so forth. And it says, do not murder a child by abortion or kill a newborn infant. And then it keeps going and going and going and going and going. Early church councils. Council of Avira, seven, this is 305. Canon 68, if a catechumen should conceive by an adulterer and should procure the death of a child, she can be baptized only at the end of her life. Council of Ansira 314, this is right before Council of Nicaea. Canon 21, <coughs> women who prostitute themselves and kill the child thus begotten, or who should try to destroy them when in their wombs, are by ancient law excommunicated to the end of their lives. We, however, have softened their punishment and condemned them to the various appointed degrees of penance, for 10 years. See, that, that, that's back in the day 
where your penance was more than just 10 Hail Marys and her father. I mean, the, the penance were severe and they were typically public. You were publicly outed. Look, there's other ones that we hear. I mean, we're we're going to make this episode short, but you can look these up. Athenagoras, AD 77, has a quote on it. Basil, St. Basil, 329 AD. Jerome, we have an episode on Jerome here, uh, 347. St. Augustine has quotes on abortion being wrong. Gregory the Great, one of the doctors of the church, one of the greatest popes of all time, has a, a rhetoric. Hippolytus, Justinian, St. Caesareus, Minucius, Tertullian, we have an episode on Tertullian, we have an episode on Ambrose, say John Chrysostom, we have an episode on him. So again, it's like people can have their opinion because their opinion wants to justify what they believe. So those Catholics who who think that abortion's fine or that the church hasn't been consistently teaching that or they want to somehow spin what's said in the Old Testament about thou shalt not kill and what, you know, the Ten Commandments in general, but, but the, the moral law uh, that we've always had, which is consistent with natural law, murder is always wrong. Murder is always wrong. But they'll spin it and say, well, you know, it's in the child, it's, it's in the woman, the woman has a right, da, 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 da. the church is wrong, the church is wrong. As I've talked about in the episode, there's no such thing as a liberal Catholic and some other but similar episodes. It's, it's, we have to submit our will to that of God instead of trying to turn God's will to submit to our will. So anyone who supports abortion is wrong. You're, you're simply wrong. Like we can't say this in the snowflake culture that we live in. It's like you're wrong. Okay? It's not that I am right. I'm just parroting what Holy Mother Church teaches via the catechism and what it's taught in its ordinary magisterium for 2,000 years and its deposit of faith. Abortion has always been wrong. It will always be wrong. It's a gross violation of natural law. And so despite what any pro-choice Catholics say, simply they are wrong so if you have any pro-choice catholics that are in your face all the time just again you could just google it but just you can use this video as a reference that clearly nobody including jesus christ would have supported the murdering of the unborn or the murdering of children I mean, what do you say let the children come to me right he's, he didn't say there's nothing you can find in the new testament that would support that they were okay with it the pagan culture the, the greek culture at the time just like the episode we'll have on homosexuality uh, was supportive of homosexuality, not to the standard of calling it marriage, but they were more supportive of it. And certainly in, in the Greek culture that the apostles lived in that spread westward, um, they were more supportive of abortion for sure. But the church has always taught against it and again, will always teach against it. And these are just some sources to reference. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Hit the notification, subscribe and share button, share with others. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.